Hello, hello. Welcome to the news. This week, we have news of updates, some aircraft, and some sceneries. Don't go anywhere. So I'm joined once again by your man over by yonder, your man over there. It's Gibbo, Ireland. Gibbo, how are you? Murph, how you doing? Good to see you. What's going on? I sure look at I dress for the occasion, you know. We're supposed to be all professional. What sort of anchor man are you? Well, I'm just, just a t-shirt. No, it's grand. It's grand. Yeah, I should be just glad you, you're wearing some sort of clothes anyway. You want to see down below, man. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm wearing shorts. I'm wearing shorts, right? <laughs> it, it's it's mild in Ireland, right? It's getting there. You're in a hoodie. Anyway, give what we have news this week. There's stuff <laughs> happening in the land of the simulator. So uh, well, we'll kick it off here with this. And it's a very fancy MIG. What's the story here? Yes, it is fancy, Murph. This comes t to us from uh, Golden Key Studios, which is the Ukrainian team responsible for the project. Hmm. And they're bringing us finally the MiG-21 BIS, which is, of course, the iconic Soviet era fighter and interceptor for Microsoft Flight Simulator. So we've talked about them before. This is a small team based out of Kiev in Ukraine, and they've worked in close collaboration with real MiG-21 pilots and have had access to the actual training cockpits in the Ukrainian Youth Space Center, uh, which they collaborate closely with. Uh, this is a true labor of love, this MiG-21 BIS from uh, GKS, because they already launched this aircraft for P3D. Mm -hmm. uh, they tell us it'll be a virtual replica of the MiG-21 with authentic flight dynamics based on a military training simulator. And us simmers will find a realistic autopilot system as well as even a fully functional fuel drop tanks and a drag chute with accurate dynamics. Mm. So this is available right now via the InSim marketplace price at $39.99. But they are planning to release it through other vendors in the future, which will feature cosmetic weapons. Um, that are not available in the marketplace version. So you may wish to hold off and, and wait for that one. So yeah, it's available right now. It looks fantastic. And I remember reading up on this uh, a couple of months back and we were looking at it thinking, whoa, look at the state of this. Mm. Uh, but I think, yeah, the absolute kind of, you know, golden nugget of information there is to get a more um, authentic look, if you like, of the aircraft is going to be maybe hang on until this comes out through the other vendors, mainly for having a display at least of uh, weapons and, and other bits and bobs. But uh, it's 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 an interesting uh, price point, right? Uh, it's, yeah. it's especially for the marketplace. So uh, yeah, we got to check this out soon. Let us know in the description or in the chat box below uh, if you want to see this on a live stream. Uh, so moving on, it's over to me now. And uh, well, we have here an aircraft. It's from a company called Flight Replicas and they've released the Piper L4 Grasshopper for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Uh, the Grasshopper, essentially it's based on the iconic J3 Cub uh, and it's just the military version of it. So it's available now. It's in the uh, it's on the website from Flight Replica. Uh, there's a good old price in it. It's uh, fourteen or fifteen dollars. That's all. Fifteen ninety nine to be exact. We actually took this on our live stream on Monday, and uh, it's very very slow, <laughs> and it doesn't go very high. Uh, but I don't know. It has character, and I'm always saying this about add on aircraft, right? It does a bit of character to this thing. Um, it's very comparable to that of obviously the Cub. And anything kind of, you know, the small tailwheel draggers, even with black boxes L19, it's very, very comparable to it. The only thing, there's no custom sound set. This is using like the default Cub sounds, which eh, it is what it is. Uh, it's a very functional airplane. It flies really well. It's nice to fly in the sim. Uh, it comes with an absolute truckload of liveries as well, uh, both based around World War II and there's one or two post-war ones as well. So you can pick it up over on the Flight Replica. And these guys, Flight Replica, they've been making add-ons for FSX and P3V for years. So it'll be interesting to see. This is the first offering. Uh, I'm really looking forward to see what else we get. The aircraft for that price, as I said, with all deliveries, it comes with three variants. It has the Observer, uh, the uh, Liaison, which was used for transporting uh, VIPs around the shop, uh, and also an amphibian uh, boat plane version with floats. Uh, there's a mouthful. I just had to say it came with floats. Uh, but it's available now in the sim, uh, for the sim, in the thing. Moving on. <laughs> I'm doing well. Give all over to yeah. you, quick. Murph, this is Landmarks Melbourne. Uh, do you know what they say Melbourne in Australia? It's Melbourne. B-U-N. Melbourne. Yeah. Do you like uh, that? 
Really? Yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Watch. Oh yeah. Uh, so this comes to us from Orbix, and of course, Orbix have released some cracking actual landmarks before, including Adelaide, Auckland, Brisbane, and Sydney. And now it's time for Melbourne's turn. Um, of course, Melbourne is one of the most important cities in Australia, home to more than five million people. It's the second busiest airport and the busiest seaport. And Orbix are looking to take advantage of this, I suppose, to create some fantastic landmarks in a package here that will improve the scenery that we've already seen updated in World Update 7. Uh, but they're bringing increased levels of photogrammetry and a, and a lot of custom landmarks. So let me tell you about those. Uh, in this package, Orbix will add 200 custom-made buildings, landmarks and other structures which will include many famous locations in the city. Uh, they'll also include animated objects, which is very, very interesting. So things like metro trains, hot air balloons, and um, even race horses will be getting some life. Nice. And uh, it'll definitely be an interesting sight when flying above the city. Uh, in addition to that, there'll also be some other bespoke features outside of the city center. And they'll include some important VF4 reporting points that have been recreated in some great detail even numerous helipads that can be found across the city have been recreated for helicopter pilots looking to take uh, take in some gorgeous urban views here too. So uh, yes, this is not yet released as of time of recording, but we expect it to be out very, very soon from Orbix for um, Microsoft Flight Simulator. And as I say, it's called Landmarks Melbourne. Two things. First, will there be virtual horse racing and can we virtually bet on the virtual horses? Get up the yard. <laughs> but the second thing is, right, I'm a huge fan of Orbex. I love the products uh, and when it comes to the Landmark series, like they absolutely know what they're doing, especially, you know, this is a native Australian scenery that the guys are working on, right? But it kind of begs the question, the Sim just got an Australian update. In actual fact, didn't they include photogrammetry with Melbourne? And yet here we are, Orbex have to present their own product to say ah yes but this is how it should really look i just think it's interesting to find out like you know the photogrammetry is nice and it, it seems to be getting better and better australia was very very good italy yeah not so much uh, but for me i think australia was excellent but it's isn't it kind of odd the way that orbex still have that capacity to say we'll actually make it a lot better i just it's kind of interesting isn't it yeah, they're going head to head against the Sobo here, really, because it'd be easy to compare before and after. So, um, yeah, I, I mean, um, they're they're doing it across the board. Look, we have nine world updates at the moment, so uh, they're running out of places <laughs> that what wouldn't be covered by a Sobo. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Right, so moving on. Uh, finally, we have the release of the fourth local legend for Microsoft Flight Simulator, and it is, wait for it, the Savoia Marchetti S55. Uh, one of the local legends. It's a flying boat from the interwar period, uh, which was developed between Asobo and Mike Johnson, uh, the founder of Lotus Sim and an expert of the L-39 Albatross. Uh, it was used only for surveying real-world aircraft as a reference to bring this historical machine to the virtual world of Microsoft Flight Sim. Uh, this release is tied to the latest world update, which was dedicated to Italy and Malta. It's a very uh, peculiar aeroplane. If you look at the floats, that's where the people used to sit. In the floats, that's a very unique sort of a viewpoint, right? And um, I've flown this, and I have to say, it, it's it's a beautiful looking plane, right? You know, the engine configuration is, is using the the good old push pull configuration, uh, and even where the pilots sit, uh, you know, you've literally a windscreen, and that's it. And it looks so so narrow. Do you know, it's like this thing would have been an absolute blast. Uh, but you know, it was a record setter, uh, and and definitely definitely a very famous airplane. It's available uh, now in the sim. Uh, for a price of just fourteen ninety nine, uh, and as I said, I've flown it. I like it. Uh, it's it's not going to win any records. It's not the slowest they've have, uh, you know, that they've released. But uh, I just think by the, the by the sheer state of it, it looks absolutely mad looking. Uh, I've flown it, and it is, uh, uh, and you know, it's a lot of fun. Have you tried the Ekibo? I've not. No, I'm intrigued now. I'm intrigued now. I think there's another model that it comes with too. There's a more powerful X version. Yeah, so like there's a modern version that they brought out. So the more powerful is the S55X, uh, which well, you know, was the final and most advanced airframe that was produced. Uh, this is the model used in the famous uh, transatlantic formation flight known as the Decennial Air Cruise, uh, which saw 25 of these aircraft fly from Rome to Chicago. Um, so yeah, like it's steeped in history. There's a lot of cool stuff here as well. So uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's it's I, I recommend it. Like I've I've yet to come across an aircraft 
Um, I think the Fokker 7 was a little bit kind of head-scratching, but the Local Legends, I, I, it's a great addition to the sim because there's just so much history with these and uh, they've done a great job. It looks and sounds fantastic, do you know? So, uh, so unique. It's, it is very unique, you know? But uh, moving on, here's something unique right here. Yes, we're here from Orbix again. This is Boise Airport, Murph. Uh, Kilo Bravo, Oscar, India. And this is a multi-purpose airport serving both commercial and military traffic. Um, now, what's interesting here is the HC Tower. The airport is a standout thanks to its towering height of 295 feet. Um, so it's actually one of the tallest buildings in Idaho, uh, which gives great views across the whole airport. Now, the current passenger terminal here at Boise opened in 2003, and it sees eight airlines that provide 26 destinations across the U.S. Um, to many airports, actually, that Orbex have recreated for the same too. So Orbex tells us that they've recreated the airport here to include custom buildings, grand polys, and author imagery in the area. There's PBR texturing across the product with even custom military models that are static at several points around the airport too. So at the moment, it's launched with a 20% discount for the next few days. So if you act quick, it means that you can buy it now for approximately $12 or 11 euros. And after the discount ends, it can be yours for about $20 or so from Orbex. I was calling this Bowsy. I was like, give out Orbex the release Bowsy. And you're like, huh? I was like, yeah, Bowsy. <laughs> Bowsy? You're a Bowsy. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. And again, it's a unique airport. It was known as Bowsy. What does it mean? It, just something to know. But uh, it's in an interesting neck of the woods. I love flying up uh, up that part of America. And uh, again, it's it's the airport itself. It serves, you know, it's ideal for the airliners, but also the smaller aircraft as well. Uh, and it is, it's nice to see a couple of uh, the mixed kind of military and civilian airports uh, come to life as well. So it's, uh, it's pretty awesome, you know. But uh, moving on, more news. Gibbo, what is this? It looks very familiar. This is a 737 Murph. What? I don't believe it. <laughs> yeah. So we got a little news on the Dash 600 variant to share with everybody here. So this, of course, is the latest member of the 737 fleet coming from PMDG. And what they shared with us recently is that they're exploring ways on how they could rapidly get the Dash 600 variant into the marketplace alongside how they do it on the PMDG store. And so they're looking to do both at the same time concurrently. And nothing has been decided at this time, they stress, uh, but they're looking into it. Uh, aside from that, though, um, they also shared that they are looking to update their guidance on the pricing for the Dash 600. So to quote, they think initial guidance on the 600 package trended a bit higher than is probably appropriate for the product scale. So that might mean that they're looking to perhaps readjust mm. it. And they did say originally that the price of the Dash 600 would be approximately $50. So I guess it will remain to be seen what they end up charging for that. Um, in addition to that, we, they also said that beta testing is running approximately seven to nine days late. So there's a chance it may roll out in the middle of uh, June as originally anticipated. That again, be a bit shaky whether or not they make that that time. Um, however, it's also worthy to note that if the 600 variant is delayed, it doesn't necessarily mean that the next one, which I believe is the Dash 900, will be delayed as well. So they're not uh, they're not tied to each other in that way. Mm -hmm. uh, the final thing then was a couple more updates from PMDG in terms of what's top of mind for them. They talk about lateral and vertical path modules being prepped and tested, despite some issues with debugging tools from Asobo that they're looking to. to to work around and um, so yeah i think more is to come from pmdg but it's interesting to hear some first news on the 600 and airiness from them it is and like i suppose i don't know how popular a 600 variant of the aircraft is going to be uh, i think you know a lot of people at the start would say no i'm going to hold out until we get the 800 series uh, and then they saw everyone flying the 700 series and they're everywhere. I mean, so many people have purchased the, the 700 series aircraft. The 600, I don't know, it just feels that there's there's less appeal. I mean, it is it is the smallest in the 737 line um, is the 600. So it'll be interesting to see how many folks are actually going to jump at this. I think it is important uh, and it's, it's actually welcomed. Uh, you know, Robert has mentioned they might have to rethink the pricing structure uh, for these other additional aircraft uh, because I don't know. Is it going to be there? Like it's it's if you price it right, you know, people will buy it. You know, if it becomes expensive, well, you're really only going you're only going to get the folks who absolutely want a 600 series uh, in their fleet. 
So yeah, look, there's absolutely no question uh, in terms of the build quality uh, and the fidelity of it. We all know and love the 737 that's currently available in the same. I think PMDG have done an outstanding job, uh, not to mention all the updates due out uh, coming very, very soon with the EFB and so on and so forth. So yeah, I don't know. It's interesting uh, and I welcome the the thought process at least that they might be looking at a change in the pricing structure for the ancillary aircraft and it's probably the best way to put it right it's an ancillary yeah. aircraft. Uh, by that logic though murph if they were to change the price lower based on its popularity surely then the dash 800 would be reduced too compared to the seven it's hard to know because i think there's more demand if you like for the 800 only because it's real world operation is still very very popular right but yeah i don't know it, it's 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 a 737 right so, like i know pmdg are saying no they're each unique aircraft they all got to be coded as unique aircraft but uh, i don't know like i mean it, how popular would it be if you know this came out with a different set of engines is everyone going to buy the full aircraft because of sports different engines i don't know it's hard to call so yeah. look it's going to be interesting to see for sure um you know watch this space any updates we get will definitely bring you uh sure. bring them to you so we have news gibbo of flight sim expo they have released the date for flight sim expo 2023 and it's going to be in Texas. It's going Woo! to be, right? Do you know what I mean? So uh, San Diego, of course, in 2021. Uh, nothing happened this year, but it's uh, now provisionally they've booked it uh, to be in June. Uh, the venue is going to be in a place called uh, the Lone Star Flight Museum, which, which is in Houston, Texas. Uh, and they're looking at around June uh, 23rd, 24th, 25th. Uh, everything has yet to be confirmed. They're just waiting on a couple of more bits and bobs before they release tickets. Uh, and they'll also do the usual of trying to get kind of discount or group discounts for local hotels and bits and bobs. But what I absolutely love about this, it's at a, an actual venue, uh, which is an aviation themed venue. It's a museum. Uh, and I think this could be a lot of fun. Plus the logistics. Uh, and, you know, there's, there's, there's more th local sites, if you like. I mean, you got the Kennedy Space Center down the road. Uh, this could be an absolute cracker of uh, of a location to go. So um, I'm going, even though I said I was going to Oshkosh, but I'm going to this one <laughs> if I to start now and, and make my way over. So uh, any updates that we get, uh, it'll be coming true from uh, Flights of Mexico themselves. And uh, yeah, I can't wait. Gibbo, is this like, this is like going to be Christmas for us. It's like, yeah, we're going. That's yeah. it. Yeah, you we're know? going. We're going. You just want to wear a cowboy hat, though. Let's be clear, right? That's why you want to go. I once earned a cowboy hat uh, by not opening a gate. And by not opening the gate, the cows didn't get out. And I was said, I was told, <laughs> you did a great job there. I said, yes. And I, I they gave him the cow. I have the hat here. I'll wear it some night just to show you. I have a real hat. Uh, oh, but, uh, dear. I got it for not opening the gate. Uh, but anyway... Uh, Flight Sim Expo. Cannot wait for this one. Absolutely can't wait. So that is it for this week. Uh, short and sweet and to the point. A bit like myself. And uh, well, don't forget, you'll catch us quite too. You'll catch us on the live stream every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 1900 Zulu time over on twitch.tv forward slash Two Tone Murphy. A huge shout out to Vasco and everyone over at msfsaddons.com for helping us out with all the news. And until next week, look after yourselves. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you soon. See you next week. Take care.